RF2s might just be the game changer you didn't know you needed. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser garage. Me and my wife run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping out you with your laser or CNC business. If you've seen any of my past videos about my Bolt Pro 32 by Thunder Laser, you've probably noticed I talk a lot about its RFCO2 tube. And if you haven't seen any of my past videos, what the heck are you doing? After you're done watching this one, click on the playlist at the end screen and stick around for a bit. Anyways, if you think all CO2 laser tubes are the same, you're in for a big surprise. RF2s might just be the game changer you didn't know you needed. Let's break down why right now. First, let's start with the basics. Both are CO2 laser tubes, which basically means they use carbon dioxide to generate a laser beam for engraving and cutting materials. The main difference lies in how they're powered and how they're constructed. A DC glass tube is the more traditional option. It's essentially a long glass tube filled with CO2 and other gases. This tube operates on a direct current, which means it uses a constant, steady voltage to create the laser beam. These tubes are very common and have been used for many years in major industrial settings and also hobby level laser machines. On the other hand, RF tubes use radio frequency energy to excite the CO2 gas inside the tube. In contrast to glass DC CO2 tubes, RF laser tubes are made from a more durable material like ceramic or metal. And instead of relying on direct electrical current, the RF system uses a high frequency alternating current to create the laser beam. So while both are CO2 lasers, the internal technology and power source are different. Let's start by talking about the advantages and drawbacks of DC glass tubes. DC tubes are excellent at cutting and can be easily obtainable at power levels up to 150 watts for the hobbyist or small business owner. DC tube machines around this level of power can easily cut through three quarter inch wood or acrylic. DC tubes are affordable, both in initial cost and replacement cost. If you're just starting out with laser engraving and don't need to run your machine constantly, DC glass tubes can be a great way to save money. But that's not to say DC tubes aren't for professionals, not at all. There are lots of great professional or industrial style machines that use glass DC tubes. Glass DC tubes can be less suitable for tasks requiring high detail and precision due to the large beam size when compared to RF laser tubes. DC tubes have a shorter lifespan. They may need replacing every 2,000 to 5,000 hours of use depending on the manufacturer. Due to the direct current design, they can suffer from power fluctuations, which might lead to inconsistent engraving quality. For example, this can happen if you run an air compressor or other high wattage tool on the same circuit as your laser. And this is also why it's recommended to run your laser on a dedicated electrical circuit. Also, running some glass laser tubes at high power percentages can also cause a premature failure. I'm not gonna get too far in the weeds about this, but sometimes it's referred to as overdriving. It's why you hear a lot of people recommend to not run your glass CO2 laser above around 50 to 60% of its total power. The cool thing about Thunder laser glass tubes is that they are matched at the factory with their power supply, which eliminates overdriving. So you can run them at 100% power without fear of premature failure. Lastly, they're made of glass. So there's always a risk of breakage, especially if the machine is handled roughly or moved frequently. Or if you live in a cold climate region, you may have to think about protection against freezing temperatures. This is because glass DC tubes are filled with water circulated by an external chiller in order to keep them cool while running. If this water freezes, your tube's gonna break. Now, let's talk about RF CO2 laser tubes. RF tubes last significantly longer, up to 10,000 hours or more, which means fewer replacements and possibly better value for money over time. RF tubes have a small laser spot size and high beam density. This allows for extremely fine engraving detail, yet ample cutting power. I like to think of the RF tubes beam like a scalpel. Delicate for fine work, but a sharp cutter with a small curve. RF tubes can also fire at higher pulse rates when compared to DC glass tubes, meaning faster engraving speeds are possible. The beam pattern is also very uniform through all power percentages from around two to 100%, meaning settings in delicate materials like paper or leatherette can be dialed in without burning. In contrast, DC glass tube machines, especially higher wattage versions, may not produce marks at power levels below 12 to 15%. RF tubes are more durable and less prone to damage compared to DC tubes. They are also air-cooled, so no need for an external water chiller. If you're working in a tight space or want to reduce the weight of your machine, RF tubes are typically more compact and lighter than DC tubes. 
The only major drawback I can think of for RF tubes is cost. RF tubes are more expensive up front and replacement tubes can be more costly versus DC glass tubes. Okay, so there's the pros and cons of each type of laser tube. Let's summarize and look at the key differences between the two of them. RF laser tubes are generally more efficient than DC glass tubes. They use higher frequency energy, which allows them to produce a more stable and consistent laser output. This makes RF tubes ideal for high precision cutting and engraving. DC tubes, on the other hand, tend to have more fluctuation in their power, which can affect the quality of their beam. RF tubes have a much longer lifespan when compared to DC glass tubes. While glass tubes typically last anywhere from two to 5,000 hours, RF tubes can last up to 10,000 hours or more, depending on the quality of the tube in the machine. This means RF tubes require less frequent replacement, which is a huge advantage for commercial or high usage environments. DC glass tubes are more fragile given their glass construction. They're susceptible to breakage from shocks or bumps. RF tubes, however, are made of more durable materials like ceramic or metal and are designed to withstand a bit more wear and tear. They're also sealed, so you don't have to worry as much about the vacuum inside the tube degrading over time like you might with a DC tube. RF tubes are typically smaller and more compact compared to DC tubes, which can be large and bulky sometimes. This can make RF tubes a better fit for machines with limited space or where weight is a concern. DC glass CO2 tubes have a lower upfront and replacement cost. However, the higher costs associated with RF tubes can be offset with increased production time. So which laser tube is right for you? Well, it really depends on what your specific needs are. If you're just getting started, you don't plan on using your laser engraver heavily, or you run a business which focuses heavily, say, on cutting parts out of half-inch MDF or plywood, a DC glass tube might be the best option for you. They're affordable, easy to maintain, often come with large bed sizes, and are great at cutting. If you're looking to run a high output shop, need better durability, and want to ensure your engraving quality is consistent and top notch, then an RF CO2 tube is a solid investment. Sure, it costs more up front, but with its longer lifespan and stable output, it's worth considering if you're running a professional operation. Personally, my choice is clear, I think. I'm a big fan of the RF lasers and own three versions, two 35 watt Thunderbolts and one 55 watt Bolt Pro 32. Our business is heavily focused on making plaques and awards, so engraving in high quality at a quick rate of speed is crucial for us. Well, hopefully that gave you a clear picture of the differences between RF tubes and DC glass laser tubes. Let me know in the comments which one you're using or considering for your machine. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more laser engraving tips, tricks, and comparisons. And don't forget to check out my other laser and CNC videos showing up on your screen in just a few seconds. If you're interested in lasers or CNCs, this is the place to be. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.